So in these two sections, 3, 8, and 3, 9, we're going to be looking at two different differentiation techniques. One is implicit differentiation and then logarithmic differentiation. So implicit differentiation is used when the function is not expressed explicitly in terms of the independent variable, and I'll show you what that means. Whereas logarithmic differentiation is used to make derivatives easier or possible in some cases by using logarithms. And the reason these are somewhat connected is uh, the logarithmic differentiation ends up using implicit differentiation in it, although in a um, small way. Um, but so these are two techniques that we use in different situations. All right, so we're going to look at implicit differentiation first. Okay, so what does it mean for a function to be in explicit or Im implicit form? So what we're really talking about is uh, the function y. We're taking y to be a function of x. And so y could be explicitly described in terms of x. In other words, it's solved for y. Everything on the right-hand side is has only x in it and no y's. That's the easiest form to do derivatives in, and that's what we've been doing exclusively up to this point. But not all functions come expressed that way. We could have the function y in an implicit form. In other words, we're still thinking of the function y as a function of x, but the y is implicitly defined in there. It's not the equation there that we're going to use to define the function is not expressed explicitly as y equals just x or uh, things involving x. It's the y is now mixed in. Now, the point is that it might be very difficult in some cases, or it might even be impossible in some cases to write it explicitly in terms of x. In other words, to solve for y. So, that's why um, we need this technique. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to talk about the importance of the differentiation variable so we understand um, what's happening in this technique. So realize that, again, when you're saying you're taking the derivative, you're saying you're taking the derivative with respect to x in this case because it says d dx. So if I'm just doing the derivative with respect to x of x to the fourth, well, then that's just our usual 4x to the third, okay? But if I'm doing the derivative with respect to x, as I have here, but of y to the fourth, and y is a function of x, so essentially what I have is I have a chain rule situation. So if I'm going to do this derivative, I'm going to do it, it's 4y cubed. And then I have to go in and take the derivative of y, so I'd multiply by dy dx. I don't know what y is right now, but I know that if I take the derivative of it, that'll be the chain rule factor. So that's a big difference there. And so we see that dy dx pop up when we're doing a derivative of a function y of x, and we're doing the derivative with respect to x, okay? If, as a side note, if we were looking at d dy of y to the fourth, then that would just be 4y cubed, because in this case, it's with respect to y. But if, if it's a variable that's within the function, then we need chain rule. So we're going to actually use this idea in implicit differentiation. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take an equation, we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x, assuming that we want to eventually uh, find uh, dy dx. So with respect to x, and then we'll actually just solve for the dy dx in order to get our derivative. So let's take a look at an example and uh, we'll walk through the process of doing this. 
All right, so given uh, x squared plus y squared is 25, find dy dx. So we are taking y to be a function of x, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say x squared plus y squared is 25. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative, so let me just do this in red this time, d dx of both sides. Okay, so I'm just trying to show that what we're doing is we're applying the derivative operator d dx to both sides. Okay, so what do we get? So now what we have to be careful is we have to be careful of when we get to x uh, quantities and y quantities because we're going to treat them a little differently. So when I get to the derivative of x squared there, that's my normal 2x. Then I have plus, and then I get to y squared here. Now y squared, like we said before, y is a function of x, so this is really a chain rule. So I get 2y times dy dx. Okay, And that's the derivative there. So notice um, the difference is in the when I did the y term, I have a dy dx equals, okay, and the derivative of 25 of constant is 0. All right, so that's the derivative taking. So now it's really an algebraic problem of I have to solve for dy dx. So the, do the normal thing. Uh, we'll leave that on the left side. I'll subtract the 2x to the other side. So I get 2y dy dx equals minus uh, 2x. And then divide over dy dx is minus 2x over 2y, and you see that the 2's will cancel. So in the end, I get dy dx equals minus x over y. And there is my derivative. Okay, so notice one thing. This derivative looks a little different than before because I actually have a y in the derivative. Okay, that's not a big deal, all right? We started out in the, in the original um, version of this that I couldn't or didn't want to solve for y. So a trade-off is, yes, I might end up with y's in my derivative, but that's okay. But it's different than before. All right, but I want to show you that this is really working out the same way as Earlier, you know, when we were talking about what is the derivative, the derivative is still the slope of the tangent line. So let's take a look at this. All right, so I want you to remember that uh, dy dx is still uh, just negative x over y for this problem. So here's the function. This is x squared plus y squared equals 25. It's just a uh, circle of radius 5. So that's the curve that we're looking at. And let's say I wanted the tangent line at, say, uh, this point here, 4, 3. Realize 4, 3 is on the curve because uh, we can see that 4 squared plus 3 squared is 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay, so that does work. So if I wanted the tangent line at that point, okay, so I would know that the dy dx at uh, the point 4, 3 would just be uh, minus 4 minus x over y, so minus 4 thirds. Okay, so let's see that in here. So there's the slope of minus 4 thirds, so that means I could go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, or up 4, back 3. So there are a couple of points along with the point on the curve, and I could just connect these. So let me do that. And there is my tangent line. 
but wanted to know what it was exactly, well, again, we found that the slope was negative 4 thirds, and I know we have a point for 3, so y minus 3 is negative 4 thirds x minus 4 from point slope. So y minus 3 is negative 4 thirds x plus 16 thirds y equals negative 4 thirds x. Add over 3, which is 9 thirds, so I'd get plus 25 over 3. And there is the tangent line at that point. And so everything is working out before. We still found the derivatives. It's still the same thing, but we just found it in a different way and expressed it a little bit differently.